The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Email address is X-Zone at X-Zone Radio TV dot com. On MSN Messenger, X-Zone Radio TV at Hotmail dot com. And our website, www.XZoneRadioTV dot com. My first guest on tonight's show, X-O Nation is uh, Dr. Stephen Garrett Marcus. We're going to be talking to the good doctor about can patients fight cancer complications? Well, often it's not the cancer that kills, it's the complications of cancer, some of which can be corrected with quick attention, says our guest this hour, Dr. Stephen Garrett Marcus. And this is a quote, Complications are common, says uh, Dr. Mar- uh, Dr. Marcus, the author of a comprehensive new reference a uh, book entitled Complications of Cancer, and his website is www.complicationsofcancer.com. Uh, let me see, and they become more frequent and severe if cancer progresses or spreads. Immediate medical attention is critically important with serious complica- when serious complications develop, he emphasizes. And joining me now is our guest this hour, Dr. Stephen Garrett Marcus. And uh, Dr. Marcus, welcome to the X-Zone. Thank you, thank you for having me. You know, um, cancer seems to be on the on the rise. Uh, 50, 60 years ago, for cancer to be diagnosed in someone was very rare. Why is that, sir? I think it it largely is based upon first uh, increased recognition of cancer, increased ability to diagnose cancer mm-hmm. in its earliest stages, but also its changes in many of the habits that produce cancer. And of course, the most common habit producing cancer is cigarette smoking. Cigarette smoking is very highly associated not only with lung cancer, but with a variety of other very serious cancers, such as cancer of the throat, mm-hmm. cancer of the esophagus, uh, and uh, and cancer of the bladder. And so smoking, uh, smoking which increased probably Probably uh, quite a bit after World War II, when it became very common to smoke, is a big problem. And also, overeating uh, excess calories has also been linked to an increasing risk of cancer. How dangerous is secondhand smoke? Is it as dangerous as uh, the person who takes the first puffs and actually gets it into their lungs? Uh, secondhand smoke is very dangerous, although it's not as dangerous to be exposed to secondhand smoke as to be smoking oneself. But often you see people who uh, smoked for years and mm-hmm. then stopped, and then years later developed lung cancer. But often they're living in the in the house with someone else who didn't stop smoking. So the continued secondhand smoke to which they're exposed continues to increase their risk of cancer. So secondhand smoke is a risk to everyone, but it's especially a risk to people who uh, one time were heavy smokers and then stopped and continued to be exposed to the secondhand smoke. You know, it still boggles my mind, Doctor, with all the evidence that the medical community has come out with against the uh, against smoking and secondhand smoke, and yet the government has not done enough, in my opinion, to stop the sale of tobacco. It's like, all right, here's a gun, put it to your head, pull the trigger. You know, it's it's very difficult to regulate. It's very difficult to regulate that type of behavior. But what they can do is uh, is uh, stop smoking in public places, mm-hmm. uh, uh, indoors, and in some college campuses, for for example, they're now smoke, stopping smoking out of doors as well. But whatever can be done to uh, discourage smoking without infringing on people's uh, feelings of uh, civil liberty, I think, are quite important. Now that brings up a whole new different topic. Where does civil liberties? end and where does the actual concern for a person start 
We're going to be talking more to our guest this hour, ExoNation, Dr. Stephen Garrett Marcus. He is the author of a new book, Complications of Cancer. His website, www.complicationsofcancer.com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. The good doctor and I return on the other side of this commercial break as we continue from our studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone broadcast network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. This is Johanna Carroll, host of Dialogue with Divinity on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. While walking along Kanapali Beach in Maui this past year, I kept discovering all these shells and coral in the shape of hearts. My Dialogue with Divinity was very simple. Do you want me to do a retreat to heal people's hearts in Maui next year? And of course, the answer was yes. As a master spiritual teacher, I am offering you a neat retreat called RISE, May 8th through the 12th, 2017, and the chance of a lifetime to rest at a five-star resort for five days and experience a spiritual renewal of your heart and soul. Kanapali is one of the top five beaches in the world. This stunning resort has undergone a $40 million renovation. I walked the entire property, checked out the room choices on your behalf, and I must say, it is stunning. Our conference room faces the ocean with sliding glass doors. Maui is known as Mother Maui because it is a soft, gentle, healing energy. In the embrace of Mother Maui, you will feel yourself rising from the limitations of an ordinary life to an extraordinary journey of peace, bliss, and harmony a greater sense of clarity. Our RISE retreat ignites renewal in the sacred elements of air, water, earth, fire, and wind. There's plenty of free time to enjoy all that Maui has to offer. A small deposit is required now to reserve your space as this retreat, it will sell out. For more details, please go to johannacarroll.com and register today. Aloha, and I'll see you in mystical Maui. Exonation, our guest this hour is Dr. Stephen Garrett Marcus. Uh, He received his medical degree from New York Medical College and completed a medical oncology fellowship at the University of California in San Francisco. As a senior research executive in biotechnology and pharmaceutical industry since 1985, uh, he played a lead role in developing uh, beta-seron, 
as the, as the first effective treatment of multiple sclerosis and has led a multinational research teams for other treatments. Dr. Marcus is president and CEO of a biotechnology company developing new treatments for cancer and other life-threatening illnesses. His website, www.complicationsofcancer.com. Doctor, what are the most commonly held myths about uh, cancer treatment uh, that you can debunk? Well, I, I think that one of the most commonly held myths is that uh, is that uh, cancer is either curable or not curable, mm-hmm. and that if it's not curable, that there's not nothing much that can be done uh, to treat the cancer. Uh, cancers uh, cancers are of course often curable by surgery, but even if they're not curable by surgery, there are a wide variety of treatments that are available that can uh, that can greatly extend life and improve qual and improve quality of life. And the other major myth is is uh, the lack of focus upon the complications of cancer. That the treatment of cancer not only involves attempting to cure the cancer itself, but also to avoid or to promptly treat the, the serious complications that can pose as much of a risk to life as the underlying cancer itself. Why is it that some people get cancer and other people don't? Uh, much of that is, uh, remains unknown. And some mm. of this, of course, a lot of it depends upon our genes sure. uh, and upon our heredity, and, and a lot of it depends upon uh, exposure to uh, chemicals in our environment, to, uh, exposure to cigarette smoke. But you have many people who are extremely healthy mm-hmm. and uh, and who've uh, done all the right things their entire life and who develop cancers for reasons that are unknown. And uh, it's still one of the great mysteries in, in the world of cancer research. When doing uh, any research for cancer uh, or as well as the, the, the great work that is done by the medical profession around the world in, in helping those with cancer overcome or, or, or best as they can cope with cancer, What percentage of patients, doctor, would you say experience complications, and what are the major complications that they would face? Well, I would say that the overwhelming majority of people who develop uh, cancers other than very superficial skin cancers mm-hmm. uh, develop some uh, complications of, of the cancer. If, if a cancer is superficial or is easily treated by surgery, then often there are no complications at all. But if the, uh, if the cancer is at a stage where it becomes difficult to treat or difficult to cure or if, the, uh, or if a cure is no longer possible, then the overwhelming majority of people will have some form of complication of the cancer at, at some point over the over the coming months or years. Uh, what is the most common serious complication of cancer treatment? Well, uh, of cancer treatment itself, yes. the most uh, common complication is uh, is uh, suppression of the bone marrow. And when the bone marrow is suppressed, the bone marrow is responsible for producing the white blood cells that fight infection mm-hmm. and the platelets that, uh, that allow our blood to clot, to clot pro- properly and as well produce the red blood cells that bring oxygen to our tissues. So when, when uh, white blood cells are diminished, a person is very f- prone to uh, getting infections in particular, and that's one of the most uh, serious complications of uh, cancer treatment. You know, we, we've talked to people over the years who, who believe there's a conspiracy with Big Pharma, and, and uh, you know, Big Pharma is actually dragging their legs in order to find a cure for cancer because once there's a cure for cancer, then there's a lot of money that's lost. How do you react to those kind of statements, doctor? Well, having been in the pharmaceutical industry for many years and working with so many very dedicated, very serious scientists, I can just say that it's just absolutely not true. Uh, People working very hard to uh, find some treatment for cancer because all of us are human. Half half of us in the pharmaceutical industry will ourselves die of cancer. Almost all of us will have somebody close to us who, uh, who, who either dies of cancer or suffers with cancer. People are trying very, very hard to find some treatment uh, for uh, for cancer, it's just that it's a very very difficult nut to crack. It's very complicated science. Our tools are not sharp enough mm-hmm. to uh, yet uh, uncover all the mysteries of cancer. It's it's very difficult, but there are a lot of very smart, very dedicated people working on this. Is cancer research getting the appropriate funding? Oh, I wish it had more funding. 
Uh, it's uh, we could always use more funding from the federal government mm-hmm. or at the NIH level for what's called basic research. And uh, pharmaceutical companies also could use more money to uh, do the do the research. Uh, uh, it's uh, research to find a cancer treatment is extremely expensive, not only in the basic research that goes on in the laboratory, but also the clinical testing which we must do to determine whether a drug is safe and effective. Now, before a drug actually gets on the market that the medical profession can use. How long does it take from the time you, as a as a biotechnol uh, bioscientist, start on a project to the time it gets into what I believe is called um, uh, trials? Yes. Well, usually it takes uh, three to five years between the time somebody has a laboratory idea for something that may work, and the time until it's actually first tested in a person. The reason for this is, uh, first, you have to validate the science, then you have to do the appropriate testing to make sure that this is safe to put into human beings, uh, and then uh, you, have to, uh, you, you have to go to the ethics committees and to the uh, FDA or in, or in Canada, the, human, uh, the HPB, which is the uh, equivalent of the FDA, so that the uh, ethics can be reviewed, so that the science could be reviewed, so that the safety of the people that are going to be treated with this uh, can be uh, reasonably assured. And so that usually takes a good three to five years. And then the clinical testing itself of the drug, depending on how effective the drug uh, turns out to be, uh, will usually be another four to six years or in that range. My gosh, and of course, this is a very costly, uh, very costly procedure. It, it 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 is extremely costly and can cost, depending on the uh, drug, hundreds of millions or even over a billion dollars to develop a new drug. How close, doctor? In in your most modest opinion, are we to actually finding a cure for cancer, or is the actual finding of the cure being made so difficult by the many different types of cancers? Yes, I don't. I don't know that we're going to ever find a cure for all cancer. It's possible, mm-hmm. but it looks as though every cancer has its own unique fingerprint. Every cancer seems to be different, and there probably will be many different treatments for the many different types of cancer. But unfortunately, we've we've cured very few cancers uh, at uh, at this point in time. Uh, we can surgically cure colon cancer and prostate cancer and many other cancers, so surgical cures are certainly possible. But once something is uh, surgically not curable, uh, finding cures has been rather elusive. And uh, right now, the major curable cancers are leukemias mm-hmm. and lymphomas, and a few other uncommon cancers are sometimes curable. But the uh, the most common cancers, uh, lung cancer, breast cancer, stomach cancer, pancreatic cancer, once those are no longer surgically curable, they're very difficult to cure with existing therapies. We see on TV commercials for um, an alternative uh, health center that that says, you know, basically, if hey, listen, if the the established medical community can't cure you, we can, or come over and see us. Is there a lot of competition in the cancer, um, the fight for cancer industry within the medical community itself? Well. Uh Many many people will seek an alternative when they're told mm-hmm. by their traditional physicians that a treatment uh, treatments are no longer available that will be uh, significantly effective, and it certainly is understandable to seek those alternatives. The the problem is that many of those alternatives are really untested, and when you look mm-hmm. beneath the surface of those alternatives, they often have people with very suspect credentials and uh, often charging a very a large amount of uh, of money. This is why an, an, an important alternative with treatments or diseases that are thought to be somewhat untreatable or poorly treatable are to find uh, reputable clinical trials. Exonation, our guest this hour is Dr. Stephen Garrett Marcus. His website is www.complicationsofcancer.com. That's www.complicationsofcancer.com. Are, are the statistics that you see, doctor, showing that there is a definite spike in cancer? And are people in the younger age groups now also being diagnosed with cancer? Uh, well, many people with, uh, in younger age groups are diagnosed with, uh, with cancer. It's difficult to say whether their numbers are, 
are significantly increasing other than the increased risk of of uh, lung cancer as people have started smoking at a much earlier age and also uh, the there are some uh, cancers that are that may be related to what's called the human papilloma virus a sexually transmitted virus that also appear to be occurring at a somewhat uh, somewhat uh, younger age but overall it's not entirely clear that people are getting cancer at younger and younger ages unless they've been exposed to something that causes that cancer and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot more skin cancer coming up with the, uh, you know, more and more people spending time outside and really not taking care of the, their skin and applying the, proper, the appropriate um, preventative measures that could actually help them. Yes, uh, there, there is also a higher incidence of, of melanoma in mm-hmm. particular, which is the most dangerous uh, of uh, skin cancers uh, as, as people are exposed to more and more sun and also to tanning beds. Let's talk about tanning beds when we come back from this commercial break with our news. Dr. Marcus, thanks very much for being with us. It's very interesting talking to you, sir. Exonation. Nation, my guest this hour is Dr. Stephen Garrett Marcus. Uh, he is the author of Complications of Cancer, www.complicationsofcancer.com. And uh, we'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is The Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell. My guest this hour is Dr. Stephen Garrett Marcus. And uh, Dr. Marcus is the author of, of, an, of a book that, that deals with cancer. And the question that, uh, that we asked Dr. Marcus at the beginning of the show is, Can Patients Fight Cancer Complications? The name of his book is Complications of Cancer, and his website is www.complicationsofcancer.com. Before we went to the break, Doctor, we briefly uh, touched on uh, the different uh, scenarios uh, you know, with cancer, and, and we talked very, very briefly about tanning salons. And I was wondering if you could tell us more about how people get cancer at tanning salons is it because the same uh, the same ingredients or the same cause that would cause skin melanoma outside yes it's basically the an ultraviolet type of radiation that uh, that activates uh, mm-hmm. certain cells that are deep within the skin that produce a substance called melanin. They're called melanocytes. And when these cells are activated and you basically tickle their DNA, it can cause the DNA to suddenly become abnormal, and those cells then can begin to uh, grow and multiply. And when this happens, then they can turn into the malignant melanoma cells. So uh, so exposure to, and exposure to tan, tanning salons uh, also gives you a very concentrated dose of this harmful type of ultraviolet radiation. I understand in some states and provinces they're actually uh, issuing health warnings and uh, they're actually putting an age limit onto the people who can actually go into these units. 
Yes, I, I think that's a very good idea. But if if someone uh, does go to these units, then it's very important that they see a dermatologist regularly so that their skin can be very carefully examined from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet to make sure that none of these uh, melanomas are growing because at that point, the best chance of curing a melanoma is by early identification and then by removing the melanoma surgically. You know, somebody's probably saying, all right, it's only a small little dot, you know, who cares? But what are the complications of a person who doesn't detect the small melanoma and how can it grow and how dangerous can it be? Melanoma is one of the most dangerous of all the cancers because it has a tendency to spread widely throughout the body especially melanomas on the scalp, for example, mm-hmm. which uh, people, for example, who, are, who have bald heads and who are in the sun quite a bit should be particularly careful because they often get melanomas on the scalp, and those can be extremely dangerous because those have a tendency, tendency to spread to organs throughout the body. And so identifying them early and removing them is the best, is the best way of preventing the, the severe complications of that uh, deadly form of cancer. Let me pitch this out to you, Doctor. I'm sorry. It seems that we're having a bit of a of a sunburst over here. Um, mm. let, let, let me ask you this. All right. If, if melanoma is caused by radiation, basically, am I correct? Uh, by ultraviolet radiation. That's a major cause of it, yes. Is it then possible that the microwave radiation that is used in the cell phone industry can also cause cancer? Well, that's been the subject of a lot of dispute mm-hmm. and a lot of research. And uh, the major concern is whether or not this increases the risk of malignant brain tumors. Mm-hmm. Because after all, you put a cell phone next to your ear and your ear is next to your brain. And, uh, and so there's been a major worry about whether or not this can increase the risk of malignant brain tumors. It's not been said that it increases the risk of melanoma. But uh, but there still remains at least some concern about a higher risk of brain tumors. The most recent thinking, though, is that if there is an increased risk, it's a very trivial one. But this still remains to be uh, evaluated. It's funny because when you pull into a gas station, the first thing they tell you to do is to shut off your cell phone. And when you get on an aircraft, it affects the aircraft's avionics, so you're asked to keep your cell phone or your, your handheld device off. When you go into a hospital, they ask you to keep your your uh, handheld device off. Is this just a precaution uh, for cross-technology purposes, or is there more to it than meets the eye? Uh, the, the major concern is just interfering with other devices, at least in the hospital mm-hmm. setting, with other, other devices in the hospital. And I guess in, in an aircraft, it's interfering with the aircraft, uh, with, avionics. With whatever is in yeah. the aircraft, uh, avionics. Hmm. How is, how is the, the, the medical industry and the pharmaceutical industry, and, and of course, you, you people in research who, God bless you, my hat's off to you for all the hard work that you do. How, how are you preparing for the, the changing times? For example, there's a, there's a lot more seniors coming. The baby boomers are turning into seniors now. How is this going to affect the research and the actual production of any, of any pharmaceutical uh, breakthrough that comes well, it's going to be a very big challenge because we need new medications. The mm-hmm. uh, population is aging, and as we uh, as we are more successful in treating uh, diseases and keeping people alive longer, even curing diseases, people live to get yet more diseases. And uh, and in the end, the cost of medical care continues to climb. And so, uh, so I, a key is to do one's best to find more and more effective therapies that not only can cure the disease, but they can do so rather promptly. And uh, by doing so, reduce the overall cost of medical care, reduce the incidence of hospitalizations and all the other ancillary costs associated with that. But it is a very big challenge over the next several years is developing cost-effective medications that are that are effective and while at the same time that that don't strain the ability of the system to pay for them in, in your opinion sir what is the best medical treatment at this time for cancer uh, well the the best medical treatment when it's when it's possible is always surgical removal of the cancer mm-hmm. so uh, so if someone for example has a small localized lung cancer which is surgically curable the best treatment for it will be uh, is surgery but if the cancer is not curable uh, then every cancer is its own story and that's why in 
the book Complications of Cancer, uh, I, talk, I talk in the beginning of the book about the 15 most common forms of cancer so that I give just a broad overview of, with a lot of specific detail about uh, about the different cancers. This serves as a foundation for understanding the many complications of cancer, which I discuss later on in the book, which can uh, cut across uh, most of the major forms of cancer. What is the... Um Besides the melanoma, what are some of the signs or symptoms that one may have cancer? Or does this all depend on going to your doctor on a regular basis for regular checkups? Well, uh, you know, many cancers are just not detectable until they're rather advanced. Mm -hmm. Certainly going to doctors for regular checkups uh, can help, especially to prevent colon cancer, uh, colonoscopy or sigmoidoscopy yeah. or testing the stool for blood uh, can certainly identify colon cancer at an early stage. There's controversy about some other cancers as to how, how effective a screening for cancer really is. For example, there's controversy about the use of CT scans or x-rays for early detection of lung cancer. Uh, there are no good detections uh, for, uh, for uh, ovarian cancer at its earliest stages or for uh, pancreatic cancer or stomach cancer. Those cancers are often difficult to pick up on a routine physical examination. Mm -hmm. 1 800 610 7035 is the toll free um, number here at the Exxon. Our guest this hour is Dr. Stephen Garrett Marcus. He's the author of, do you have your pencils and paper ready? Complications of Cancer, and his website is www.complicationsofcancer.com. That's www.complicationsofcancer.com. Dot com. There are the, um, you know, there's, there's the hospitals and, and then there's the hospice and then there, like I said, there are the, there are the other uh, type of, um, of uh, institutions where they use the body, mind, soul, and spirit as well as traditional medicine to, to work with a, a cancer patient. Have you heard or have you seen or is there any evidence whatsoever that this approach works better than the traditional medical procedures? Uh, sometimes they call those other procedures best supportive care. Mm -hmm. And there have been uh, clinical trials where they've evaluated for different cancers best supportive care, which means basically non-medical treatment, but other things such as nutrition and frame of mind and, and spiritual support uh, and compared that with uh, with standard therapy, or sometimes use that as an adjunct or something that's in addition to standard therapy. And uh, what what usually uh, is uh, found is that when added on to standard therapy, it can be it can be very useful. Now, of course, it depends on what type of uh, what type of so-called alternative therapy there is. There are many mm -hmm. alternative therapies that themselves can have uh, quite a bit of uh, of toxicity. Uh, you know, for, for example, years ago, it was very common to give intensive high colonic enemas on a frequent basis to people with cancer, and often all that did was dehydrate and weaken people and, and had no benefit whatsoever. So not all alternative therapy is uh, is effective, but as an adjunct to standard therapy, uh, many of these forms of therapy have been found to be useful. Is there a way that we can start knocking down the number of people who contract cancer, you know, without uh, having to depend on the, the medical research that's going on, the pharmaceutical industry. Is, is there something that John Q. Public can do or, or try and get their governments to do? We talked briefly about the cigarette problems and, you know, the human rights. But what about the people who suffer from the, hum the secondhand smoke of these smokers who are infringing on their rights? Yeah, there are many clinical trials that are in progress of things which are called chemopreventive agents, which means medicines or vitamins that might prevent cancer in people mm -hmm. who are exposed to cancer-causing agents such as secondhand smoke. And so far, nothing really stands out as preventive. But the the only thing that one can say is that just looking back uh, uh, over broad populations, what we know is that people who eat more fruits and vegetables, and particular, and some 
particular uh, fruits such as uh, blueberries and strawberries and raspberries and people who eat a lot of green leafy vegetables seem to have a, a lower incidence of cancer and they probably do have some preventive effect in people who are otherwise exposed to cancer causing agents such as uh, such as secondhand smoke. In, in your opinion, what are some of the steps that listeners can do to better their chances to prevent cancer? I, uh, I think the first is to restrict calories. Uh, by restricting calories, I don't mean uh, something to an extraordinary extent, but uh, but uh, not not eating to excess to the point of becoming obese because obesity is clearly associated with an increased risk of cancer. And then uh, cutting back some uh, somewhat on uh, not only on red uh, red meat, but also on highly processed red meats and on uh, barbecued meats uh, that uh, can decrease the risk and and increase in the intake of uh, green leafy vegetables and and uh, and fresh fruits. Are, are we talking about barbecued meats that are charred, or are we talking about barbecued meats that are even uh, seared uh, using the new uh, propane uh, uh, propane units that have no charcoal? <laughs> Yeah, it's, prob- it's primarily charred meats and I see. primarily charred food. Jeez, I, I wonder if, if over time there's been a study done to see if there are a number of firefighters who have come down with lung cancer because of all the smoke that they eat. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Doctor, our time is nearly up here. Could you give our listeners an idea on how they can get a copy of your book, sir? Yes, uh, they can... Uh, go on to the, my website, which is www.complicationsofcancer.com. And, of course, our guest this hour, ExoNation, has been Dr. Stephen Garrett Marcus, MD, and he is the author of Complications of Cancer, www.complicationsofcancer.com. Doctor, I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great pleasure talking to you, and I wish you success in the future, and uh, thank you for all the great work that you and other researchers and doctors around the world are doing to, to help eradicate this awful disease. Thank you. Take care, Thanks sir. for having me. There we go, ExoNation, once again. Can patients fight cancer complications? Well, my guest this hour has been uh, Stephen Garrett Marcus, MD. He received his medical degree from New York Medical College and completed a medical oncology fellowship at the University of California in San Francisco. As a senior research executive in the biotechnology and pharmaceutical industry since 1985, he played a lead role in developing beta-seron as the first effective treatment of multiple sclerosis and has led multinational research teams for other treatments. Dr. Marcus is the president and CEO of a biotechnology company developing new treatments for cancer and other life-threatening illnesses and diseases. Once again, the name of his book is Complications of Cancer, and his website is www.complicationsofcancer.com. Now, I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about Article 365 of the Criminal Code of Canada, which states, doing psychic readings for a consideration is against the law in Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. I'll be back on the other side of this break. So whatever you do, do not, I mean, do not go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. 
Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. And welcome back, everyone. Geez, we started uh, this set off with Bobby Curtola singing Fortune Teller and then went right into Queen, Another One Bites the Dust. That is because we here at the X-Zone Radio Show, we're, we're going to be scrubbing all psychics. We're going to be scrubbing all clairvoyants, mediums. We're even going to, to lift uh, the... Uh, we're going to have to... Stop having those who talk about witchcraft and sorcery on the show, because according to Article 365 of the Criminal Code of Canada, and this is right out of the law books, everyone who fraudulently, A, pretends to exercise or to use any kind of witchcraft, sorcery, enchantment, or conjuration, B, undertakes for a consideration to tell fortunes, or... C. Pretends from his skill in or knowledge of an occult or crafty science to discover where or in what manner anything that is supposed to have been stolen or lost may be found, is guilty of an offense punishable upon summary conviction. Basically, what this means is that anybody, and this is our interpretation, anybody who tells fortunes, or gives psychic readings, and is paid by you, the listener, you, John Q. Public, you, a citizen of Canada, they are breaking the law. Whether they are sitting in front of you at a psychic fair, whether they are on your telephone, or whether they are doing it over the Internet. The Canadian Criminal Code of Canada is very clear and specific, and Article 365 states, Everyone who fraudulently pretends to exercise or to use any kind of witchcraft, sorcery, enchantment, or conjuration, B. Undertakes for consideration to tell fortunes. Now, I just like to interject here. Yeah, for consideration means money, uh, anything, uh, uh, property, whatever. This The person who's giving you the reading you supply them with something for that reading. That's a consideration. Uh, or, C, pretends from his skill in or knowledge of an occult or crafty science to discover where or in what manner anything that is supposed to have been stolen or lost may be found, is guilty of an offense punishable on summary conviction. For that reason, we here at the Exxon will not be having any more psychics on the show. I know there's a lot of people who say, oh, boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, you know, well, too bad. If you want help, seek professional help from a legal source. All the years we've had psychics on the show, there's not very many that I can remember that have actually come up with anything that is true. They all have major egos which are fed by your money. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exxon continues from our Psychic Free Studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. If you'd like to comment on our ban on psychics, send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. I'll be back on the other side of the news 
No, not with a psychic here in the X-Zone.